hear me okay? Hello everyone and welcome, uh, thank you for the introduction. As you've already heard, I'll uh, present our approach to temporarily link news stories. Now, here's what you can expect from the next 25-ish minute, minutes. Um, I'm first going to show you why news stories are becoming increasingly complex and how the inherent temporal structure of news stories can be used to somehow uh, counterbalance this complexity. I will then go on and use this uh, inherent temporal structure to create a network structure of news articles that is temporarily ordered. Finally, this network structure will be analyzed, optimized, and evaluated, and I'll sum up and conclude. All right, just uh, to motivate our approach, let's look at a few examples uh, that come up when you're searching for news articles covering the NSI, NSA spying scandal on a major German news site, in this case, uh, the international version of Spiegel Online. Um, and we don't have to go into any details, so just looking at the headlines, we can see that there are quite a lot of different topics involved. So there's one, for example, uh, having to do with the uh, technology company Huawei being spied on, another one somehow involving the uh, European Union and the, the German Chancellor, and yet another one, for example, about the German intelligence service somehow working together probably with the NSA. So just looking at these articles, you might see that it's quite difficult if you're reading one article, uh, if you have one article at hand, and want to determine the relationship to other articles. If you don't have any background knowledge and if you're not familiar with the topic. Um, and in addition, looking at the timestamps, uh, there are articles that have been, or that were published uh, as early as 2013, but also articles that were published in the recent past. So, Taking this into consideration, we can see that news stories and news events are often very complex, mostly due to their um, dynamic nat nature. There are very different aspects and story threads that are somehow merging and splitting apart and that are constantly changing <coughs> over time, so they are uh, dynamic in, um, in essence. So if you have one article at hand, you need to have some notion of the temporal context. So what happened before this article so that this article could happen? What were the reasons the, this, uh, the, the, the events um, reported in this article happened? Um, and this requires sometimes the uh, keeping track mentally of quite complex storylines. And finally, there are very few resources for German articles, and all the experiments were conducted with German news articles, although the examples will be in English in this presentation. All right, so let's look what we can do about this. Um, here's a random article uh, titled, The German Foreign Minister Summons U.S. Ambassador. Now, reading this article, you might wonder why the German Foreign Minister actually did do that. And if you go on and, and read the article, you will find the, the following sentence uh, saying that the foreign minister called the U.S. ambassador uh, following reports on Wednesday night that the U.S. government possibly monitored Murphy's communications. So in this case, there is an explicit date reference. So something happened on Wednesday night in this case, and this gives us explicit background information that is required to understand the story you're currently reading. Now, if we go on and are searching for all the articles that were published on this specific date, we will come up and finally find one article that fits quite well what is uh, explained here, uh, titled, Did the US have Chancellor Merkel's mobile phone? So this actually explains why uh, the, the foreign minister did actually uh, call the US ambassador in this case. And if you don't have this background information and background knowledge, it's quite difficult to judge the article that you're currently reading. All right, so um, from this follows our general idea. We want to explore this inherent temporal structure that you've just seen of news stories to create and explore news networks. Once we have done this, we will perform network partitioning and graph partitioning uh, and clustering techniques uh, to work with the network. And we will show you, you might wonder why we don't just use explicit links, so hyperlinks that are present within the news article. Um, and I'll show you later that these explicit links are not reliable and don't cover quite a lot of articles. And the final goal is to have a user-adjustable news exploration tool, so if you're reading one article, you can browse back the history of articles and see how the topic evolved. All right, 
our work is mostly related to research uh, in the area of topic detection and tracking, uh, dating back to early work um, that was mostly concerned with finding for pairs of documents, <coughs> or finding out for pairs of documents, whether they describe or are talking about the same event, but also work that deals with, um, with events in the text to so start from extracting events and then uh, clustering these articles based on the uh, existing events in the texts. Although these uh, approaches have the problem that they focus on very specific genres. So you have different events for, for example, sports events and political events and even other events. While our approach uh, uses uh, an entire document collection of news <coughs> articles, uh, uh, neglecting the genre of news articles. And then there's quite a lot of work on salience-based methods and document similarity-based methods. And we will show you uh, in a bit why this is actually not such a good idea to use for document linking when you want to consider the um, evolving aspects of story threads. I will show you in the evaluation. All right, now to understand our approach, let's look at the typical structure of a news article. You, can, you don't have to read the text, just looking at the structure that's given here, you can see that each article consists of a timestamp when it was published, the headline, an abstract, and um, the blocks or paragraphs of the article. And the abstract and the paragraphs actually contain the actual content of, a, of the article. Now, uh, keeping that in mind, we define our uh, input and our document model. So the input for our system is a, a set of articles, of news articles, that is centrally ordered, chronologically. So we are um, yeah, we're processing one article at a time incrementally. And each article consists of a timestamp and a title, the metadata information, basically, and uh, two distinct text components, the abstract and a set of paragraphs. And finally, we define three functions <coughs> that extract additional information from these text components, one for persons, one for uh, date expressions, and one for keywords. And keywords are just important words that characterize the event that happened in one paragraph or text block. Now, I want to emphasize that the timestamps are very important because they anchor the articles on a time scale, and they are basically anchors for uh, links that will be created later. I will show an example uh, in a second. And our approach now works basically like this. We first perform pre-processing uh, and process all the articles. Then we link the articles using our temporal linking approach. And finally, we score the links by relevance scores. So let's go through the steps. Just briefly looking at pre-processing, uh, we built a pipeline based on the document processing uh, framework UEMA that is tailored to German news articles and contains multiple components. I'll just men mention these three for the functions mentioned uh, a few seconds ago. Uh, to extract date expressions, we use the temporal tagger high time. For keyword extraction, we in this uh, simple setting, we use nouns, adjectives, and verbs in their lemmatized form. And finally, for persons, we're using the Stanford Named Entity Recognizer with a model trained on German news data and perform some basic clustering uh, of, of names to do simple co-reference resolution. All right, so once we have all the articles pre-processed, we go through each article, uh, again chronologically, and for each article, we extract all the date expressions that are occurring in the article. So in this example here on the right-hand side, you can see an article A, and in this case, there's only one uh, date, explicit date expression extracted on Wednesday. Now, this, uh, the, the advantage of, of a temporal tagger we're using is that it not only detects the date expressions, but it also tells us which date this expression actually refers to. So in this case, we will find out that on Wednesday refers to October the 22nd. And here you can see the, uh, uh, the timeline of news articles. And I said, as I said earlier, all the articles are anchored on their time on the, the publishing date, so at the, the date of their publishing date. Now, keeping this in mind, we use uh, the we use the normalized information we have, so we know that the, this uh, date represents or points back to an event that happened on October 22nd, and we're searching all the articles that were published on this specific date. And this uh, creates or gives our target set AT. 
Now, of course, there are quite a lot of links to many potentially not uh, relevant articles or not very important articles that have nothing to do with the uh, source article we're trying to link here. So we need to come up with some notion of relevance. And to do this, I will first uh, introduce our notion of similarity. And I want to point out that this is just one variant, and our approach is very open for extension. So it's more about the framework, and we're using one standard approach to model similarity, as you will see in a second. And I didn't put any uh, formulas in here. You can look them up in the paper, or we come, can come back to that in the discussion if you're really interested. Now, to define the similarity between two arbitrary text components, we use Jacquard and cosine similarity for keywords and persons. And to represent keywords and persons in vector space, uh, we're using TF-IDF weights. So it's a very standard metrics from uh, information retrieval, for example. Uh, it's important to note that person and keyword similarity can be weighted individually, so the user in the end will be able to decide whether he wants to put more emphasis on, on linking by uh, keywords or persons. And it turns out that the results are quite different and uh, put a different focus on the aspects you're linking articles by. Now, having a definition of similarity, we define a notion of relevance. So to determine the relevance between the source article A we want to link and the potential target article A prime uh, that should be linked, so all these articles here are potential target articles, we go through each block in the source articles article that contains the explicit date expression. So in the example before on Wednesday, and for each block, we compare the similarity between the block and the abstract of the target article. I will show you an illustration in a second. Um, so you, you might wonder why we look at the, only at the abstract of the target article and don't take into account the, the whole article we want to uh, link. And uh, the reason for that is that we think, or we, we found out that the abstract summarizes quite well the persons and keywords mentioned in the article, and if you take the, the whole article into account, um, the results get quite fuzzy because articles are talking about multiple topics and events oftentimes. So here's an illustration. We have this, uh, the source article um, that has two mentions of an explicit date expression T, in this case these two blocks, and for each of these blocks we compare the similarity between the block and the potential target article that was published on T. In this case, the second similarity is higher, and we only keep the highest similarity to determine the, the relevance between source article and target article. So in this case, we discard the, the lower score and only keep uh, the, the green link, so to speak. Doing this for all the articles and all the, the potential target articles yields, of course, a network of news articles automatically uh, by creating and establishing these links where the nodes represent news articles and the edges represent <coughs> temporal links. And the edge weights, of course, uh, represent the, the relevance score we just computed. All right, now, of course, there are also uh, still many links that are not really useful and have a very low relevance score. And to filter these out, we, use, uh, a, we introduce a, a pruning threshold of gamma, in this case, uh, that filters out edges by edge weight. Now, there might be a configuration where we don't want to filter out all the, link, the links below the threshold. And to demonstrate this, let's look at the example on the left. Uh, here we have a link between the articles A1 and A2 that is above the threshold. So this link would be kept and wouldn't be pruned. On the other hand, we have a link between A2 and A3 that has a very low relevance score. So this would actually be removed once we perform pruning but we do also have an alternative path, as we call it, between A1 and A3, so a, a transitive uh, relation, that links the, both articles and that is above a threshold. So there's an alternative path how two articles can be linked. And in such a configuration, we, uh, we, we keep the link between A2 and A3 because we think that A1 and A3 should be connected. And thus, A2 and A3 also should be connected due to transitivity. And whenever we find such a configuration, we block the pruning process. So no matter what, how low the similarity score here is, we will keep it in this case. 
All right, now that we have defined how we create the network, let's look at the network and perform optimization and uh, play with the data. All the experiments I'll describe uh, in, in the following are performed on two different data sets. Uh, one uh, that we call NSA is a manually created data set that concerns one specific storyline, uh, namely the NSA spying scan. And we started collecting articles actually from uh, 2013 to the, the recent past. This is an older version of the data set. And we, when we started collecting the articles, we had no idea that the, uh, yeah, this, um, the, the reports about the, this topic would go on so long. So if we knew that, we would probably have picked another uh, topic. And the other data set is an, uh, a larger data set comprising five major German news sites um, that are just pulled from the RSS feeds and then came through basic um, HTML processing. And there you can see we have m much more uh, articles and there the topics are very diverse. So we have all the different genres. We don't filter anything uh, except um, ads and, and pictures. Um, but you can see that the data sets are quite different. And we wanted to see how our approach behaves when we have on the one hand a very specific topic and on the other hand a very broad corpus of news articles. And one important aspect is that over uh, about 70% of all the articles have at least one explicit date expression. Now if you remember, we use these explicit date expressions to create outgoing links. So about 70% can be linked with this approach. All right, now, um, we want to study, we want to see how the pruning threshold actually uh, uh, actually uh, changes the data. For that, we look at the uh, development of the nodes and edges in the data using a different pruning threshold. And as we can see, when we increase <coughs> the pruning threshold and we, are, uh, we use the average similarity that is indicated by the dashed line here, we lose about 70% of all the weak, weak edges, but we only lose about 6% of the nodes. So after each pruning step, we also remove all the nodes that are then unconnected. So this tells us that we can uh, remove much of the noise in the data without losing many information because most of the articles are still linked. All right, now we have an, um, a news network a network that still consists of about 11,000 nodes and 180,000 edges, so we need to come up with some way of organizing this. And our first approach was to use connected components, a standard metric and, and uh, graph processing, which didn't work out so well, so we performed community detection, um, which is used in social network analysis, for example, and this yields 106 communities, clusters, and the largest community has about 105 nodes on the large data set. Now you might wonder why we don't just use models based on document similarity or topic modeling uh, to cluster our data. And here's why. If you look at one story thread that is extracted by performing our linking approach and community detection, um, and you look at the average similarity between all the articles depending on the time spent between the articles, you can see that if the articles are published on the same day, the similarity is very high. And the longer the time span, the lower the similarity score between the articles. So just relying on document similarity doesn't really capture the evolving aspects of our story threads um, and would yield topically very highly related and dense clusters. And in addition, it would ignore the network structure, as you can see here. So on the left-hand side, we perform uh, topic modeling and on the right-hand side, community detection um, on our data. And while on the left-hand side, the picture is much more colorful and beautiful to look at, on the right-hand side, community detection just much better captures the dynamics in our data. All right, so um, performing evaluation is not that easy because there's no gold standard. So it's not uh, clear how to actually link articles without doing user studies. So one way, uh, one evaluation we perform is to use explicit links, so hyperlinks in the articles as a gold standard, and see how our approach compares to these explicit links. 
Now, one thing that stands out here is that explicit links only cover about one third of all the articles. So only 30% of the articles are linked by explicit hyperlinks, while our approach is able to link about 80% of all the articles. In addition, uh, explicit hyperlinks mostly uh, remain in the same news outlet, so they don't link to other news outlets, while our approach is much more balanced and creates links across different news outlets. And finally, we wanted to see how many of the links can be, uh, of the explicit links can be recreated when we use our temporal linking approach. And we found out that we can uh, recreate about 83% of all the links, of all the explicit hyperlinks, with our, um, <coughs> with our temporal linking approach. Now, one thing I want to show you is the, uh, whether this tool can actually be used as a, news, uh, as a news exploration tool and what advantage our news structure has. So it's not all about the linking itself, it's more about the temporal network of news, news articles. And here you can see one overview article uh, for, um, for the, the article timeline of a scandal in this case. Um, and if you're reading this article, the following timeline is proposed to you. So it's dating back to, uh, to the, the beginning of the scandal, and it covers all the different stages here, just mentioned a few, that uh, this article refers to. So it's an overview article, and the structure of the whole event in this case, of the whole topic, is uh, represented quite nicely. And this is the advantage you get when you perform temporal linking in, in, instead of just linking by document similarity, because this article actually consists of many different aspects of a complex storyline. All right, so to sum up, I presented a flexible and incremental system for linking news articles um, that is open for extension. So the similarity metrics I showed you here are just an example, um, and we're currently working on uh, adding new similarity metrics and more advanced techniques. Comparing our approach to explicit links shows that we have a promising recall and a much better coverage and also uh, a broader coverage due to our linking to different news outlets. And for future work, we are mostly focused now on statistical backoff because uh, as, you, as you saw when you paid attention uh, earlier, about only 70% of all the articles contain uh, explicit data expressions. So what about the remaining 30%? Uh, they couldn't be linked at the moment with our approach, so we want to implement a statistical backoff approach that still puts the majority of the weight on our temporal linking approach, but allows for a fallback option based on document similarity if we have no other option. And finally, we want to enrich our network structure with persons mentioned in the article uh, to get more knowledge about the evolution of stories and the persons involved with it um, and we want to improve scalability, mostly uh, to be able to implement our statistical backoff approach and to be able to compute similarity between all the articles in our data set. And that's it. Thank you.